This is our 8.2 in a video series I call Design and Code My Personal Website in 12 Hours. In the last video, we marked up and styled the article section, and in this video, we're going to be using the power of Jekyll to add posts to our blog and use a Jekyll loop to pull them into the homepage. This is really cool. This is the main reason we are using Jekyll now as our site builder. So let's get into it. All right, we're picking up right where we left off in our last video. And our job right now is to create a space where we can, uh, can start to build articles and um, also get those articles looping through here. And so we want their th thumbnails. If I just hover over one of these things, we, we see that we want the thumbnail and we want the name and the date. So we need to build a loop as well that pulls this information from the articles, puts it on our page. So uh, let's start with just, let's start with, let's start with, let's start with the articles. Um, in Jekyll, you, to build articles, you go into, you, you just create a new um, folder and you call it underscore, not in assets, no, 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 no. You call it underscore posts. Now, posts is a magic folder in Jekyll. Anything that you put into posts becomes content for an article. Let me take you over to Jekyll. And if you go to Jekyll, there's great documentation about that. Go to the documentation section and the link here, writing posts. Now, this will give you a, um, a template for the naming of the files. So let's grab this here. Let's just grab that there. And I want to add a new file and I want to name it this. So the naming structure is that the year, the um, month, and the day, and then the name of the post. And then you can, the extension can be either uh, MD for markdown or uh, .html, whatever you want. So I'm going to use markdown. And then in here, I need to put something called head matter. Do we talk about head matter in this thing? Uh, here we are. Head matter. Head matter is a is a Jekyll. It's not a Jekyll. It's a it's a YAML thing. So um, you need three dashes and then three dashes. Inside of those three dashes, I'm going to put some very important uh, key value pairs. The first one is the the template, or rather the layout. The first one is that the template that it's going to be using. Um, so when this, uh, what is it called? This blog post is rendered, right? It's going to create a new HTML page for it. When it's rendered, where is it going to place that content? So you need to make a layout for it. And we're going to use default. Now, what is default? When you go back to here to layouts and click default, that's what that is. So it's just going to stick it in right here, like naked. It's going to be very boring. But you could make one, you can make a, a layouts, you know, a template that's like, you know, specifically for blog posts. And it would be, you know, special. It would have like a blog header or something like that. And in there, in here, you would say layout uh, posts, right? But we're not doing that. We're just, what, Z? Okay, we're just doing default. The next thing I need for, for my purposes is the, uh, the title. And this one I'll call uh, New Year. I guess New Year's Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. It, Eve is awesome. And then the the last bit of information I need is uh, that we talked about here. All right. So I have the date. That's come from that, that comes from the the uh, the name of the file itself. And I have the article name. New Year's Eve is awesome. I just need the thumbnail. So all right, thumbnail. That's not how you spell thumbnail. And I need the URL to the thumbnail. Uh, in this case, I have already loaded uh, here assets, images, posts, thumbnails. So I have post dash one a thumbnail that I can just use right here. It's this lady's face. And where was it? Here we are. I'll say uh, post dash one dot JPEG or no, this is a pink. 
All right, and then in each of the uh, in each of these blogs, you can have content. So I'll just write uh, "Hello World." Okay, so now we have the layout, the title, the thumbnail, and then we have some content in our post. Well, let's just Command W to get rid of that page, and then uh, Command W to get rid of that image. Okay, and Let's get rid of all these templates or these mix in templates here and bring back this down into here. Now we're going to do, we're going to make a Jekyll loop. A Jekyll loop works like this. So I want to go inside of the article wrap and I want to grab the thing that I want to loop, which is the article thumb, right? I want that thumb to repeat itself for however many articles there are. And we're going to just make a liquid loop like this. And we'll say for however many posts there are in my site dot posts, make this loop. And then right here we'll write end four. See what we got. Great. So we just have one face and it's still the same styles as everything, um, but there's only one of them and hover is not working for some reason. Why are you not working hover? Oh, article meta is not a child anymore. In our paste, it got messed up. All right, cool, cool, cool. So I'm gonna make a bunch of articles to fill up this space here. Now, these are not gonna be real actual articles, just they're like throwaway text files to show you guys how this works. And then later on, I'll go and get my, you know, get all my files from my old blog. But let me show you how it works. I actually created a bunch of meaningless text files right here and named them accordingly. I'm gonna drag them into my new Proji, my new Proj, and, uh, and save. All right, so I should have a, a, built, a filmery for every one of these projects. Um, notice that I have 13 of them because I added 12 and I have 13. So I have this like weird extra one here. I don't want that weird extra one. So I'm going to go up into my loop and I'll say limit 12. And if there's extras, they'll just not be shown beyond 12. And then the user can use this see all articles button, right? So we want to keep it at 12 because 12 divides well by four and by three also. And it looks good, looks good, looks good. So let's do this loop. Um, the first thing we know is that the, 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 what are these things called? The thumbnails are not going to be Phil Murray. They're going to be in my assets. image and uh, what was it? The path is going to be posts, thumbnails, posts, thumbnails, slash, and then we're going to use the, um, the ancient art of the, <laughs> nothing. And we're going to use this tag, which is you say post thumbnail. And that's just calling in the thumbnail, which uh, if we go back to any of these posts is going to be right here. So it's going to be post dot thumbnail is going to post is going to call in that that image right there. Uh, next is we want to say the article name is going to be very similar. What was it? Post dot post dot title was it title title. Yep. And then this last thing is going to be post dot date and save and save and refresh and save and refresh refresh come on you come on you what happened where are my thumbnails assets image post thumbnails post thumbnail post my date it's all wrong okay Ah, here's what went wrong. Uh, I, I'm calling the object of post, but up here I said po for posts, when it should be for post, singular. Um, basically, whatever I say right there after the for is what I'm creating an object of 
later on down the road. So now here they all show up because now it's post and I'm calling it post title. So that's what happened there. Now each of these have a unique uh, date and a, a unique title. See this one? And it's got its own title. The rest of these have the same title because I just copy and pasted them. But let's figure out this date. Date, date, date. Let's say uh, liquid date. So um, Jekyll uses the liquid templating language. So I just Googled liquid template date. Uh, liquid for designers. That makes sense. And find date. Date. Syntax reference for date. So the date filter on a liquid tag looks like this. You put the bar and then date and then all these little doodads here. So we go like this and um, then we get the date. Now we get the date written out. Monday, July 1st, 2013. I don't really want the day of the week, so I don't need the com A comma here. And if I do a capital Y, see how it says uh, 13? If I do a capital Y, it gives me the whole year. Say like 2013. That's exactly how I want the date formatted. Cool. And oh, one thing I noticed before we move along too far, um, I noticed that when it's wide, these article, uh, they look okay with the titles, you know, but when it gets a little too small and teeny, this is no good. This is no bueno. There's a few things that we can do to help that. Number one, number one, <laughs> sorry. Number one is we go to this name and we'll say line height, like 1.2, like 1.2. Uh, so check it out first, looks like that, and then we'll hit one point, huh? And then it looks like that. So it's gonna be a little bit tighter, and that's okay for a headline, but it doesn't fix everything. So what we need to do is, um, we need to find the point where it becomes unbearable, which is right about there, right about, right about there. 999. Okay. So we're going to make a new media query. New media query. And then max width. Max width is going to be uh, 1000. Well, we can say 999 because we're like that. If you want to be so specific. So 999. So if it gets smaller than 999, what do we want to do? I'm going to take these article thumbs. Thumbs, thumb, take the article thumb and make its width no longer 25%. 25% is a quarter, which means there's four. So we want them to be three in the row. Make them bigger. Make them three in a row. Make them three in a row. And then you'll have more space for the content. And, and also, like, excuse my hiccup. See this right here? When it gets too small, the bottom, oh, do you see that? Look at that. It shifts up. There's all this space there. That would not happen if we had three in a row. So we want to say width equals to 33.3%. That's a third. And we want to save. Come on, show me some love. Article thumb. Is the specificity not right? Should be good. Should be. Oh, it says max width. <laughs> width. Max width. Okay. Uh, so silly. Okay, so we have four and then come past 999 and then we have three. So we're not going to have that gap at the bottom. And also these are not going to be too small that, you know, our thumbnail is not going to be able to show us all that loving of the title, the title loving that we need. Cool. Uh, and then let's look at it when it gets to mobile. That is freaking large. So let's do this. We'll say max width and min with uh, our mobile size, so 640 pixels. That means that means it's only going to be limited to 642. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show, let me show you. Right here. See this green? That green is the media query we just wrote. So if it's inside of that green, it's going to have three um, three articles wide. If it's outside of that green, it's going to have the four. So it goes to the four, 
the three, and then back to the four when we hit mobile. Now when we're back to uh, iPhone size, whatever. You can't hover over an iPhone anyway. It doesn't matter. Cool. So I wanted to take care of that, and that's taken care of. Straight taken. You know what I mean? Straight taken care of. And that, my friends, is how you add articles to a Jekyll. Oh, and let's click one and see what happens. Nothing happened. <laughs> I'm glad I tried to click it. Uh, let me show you why. So what I need to do is go in here and go to the ref and say post.url. That'll do it. Because each post has a URL. Now when I click this, I get that hello world. Fantastic. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next part of this hour, we're going to be adding a little bit more uh, uh, pizzazz onto, onto these articles. Man, that was cool. Did you see that part where I was like typing and stuff and like things were happening on the screen? Yeah, man, that was like the best. I'll see you tomorrow for hour 8.3 where we add some unnecessary but fun sparkle with JavaScript. Keep on hacking.